God, we praise you for the Holy Ghost who will give us clarity this day as the people of God will partake of the bread of life. For, Lord Jesus, you have declared yourself the bread of life. God bless every one of you that are under the sound of my voice. I certainly appreciate you. Amen. We want to enter into the Lord's presence for just a few minutes. Well, we certainly appreciate you, our listeners. And for those of you, this may be your first time tuning in. You're listening to Apostle Jean Morris. And the presentation of this vocal worship melody is a Holy Ghost-given melody. And of course, I give the Lord the glory. The Spirit of God will draw us, for the scripture has said that they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. This is one of the greatest words of wisdom that was given to an unsaved woman that Jesus had on the hook. And uh, we thank God for that word. We're living in awesome times, serious times. But they are also times of preparation. We are preparing for the earthly move of God before the earth is brought into a lesser place in eternity as the church is raptured. Jesus made a statement And he established himself. He said, I am the way. This is what Jesus said. He said, I am the way. Jesus said, I am the truth. Jesus said, I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So therefore, in order for us to be a candidate for heaven, 
regardless of whether it's heavenly places or whether it is our transition into the heavens, the heaven, heavens, meaning that we leave this earthly uh, tabernacle, as people say, and we go into the presence of God for a season or even as our earthly uh, presence, many times we can travel and we can enter into the presence of God through the Holy Spirit, regardless of how it is. Amen. Jesus is our way. He said he is the truth. He is the word of God made flesh. The greatest miracle that ever happened on the face of the earth. It is the greatest miracle that the word of God was made flesh. And the scripture says, we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. When the angel brought the word to the woman, Mary, it was spirit, total spirit. But through a miracle of creation, God created a human body inside a human body. A body that was triune, a body that was physical. It was also spiritual, spirit, I should say, physical, spirit, but it was also eternal. Three, it was physical, it was spirit, and it was eternal. So therefore, that's what we are comprised of. We're comprised of a physical, a spirit, and in God, we are eternal. But now let me say this. Those that are lost will live somewhere in eternity. In eternity. Mm -hmm. Once... A person has been conceived, they live forever somewhere. But thank God for Jesus who has made it possible that we can live in the presence of God. Jesus taught concerning the kingdom of heaven. And I just want to share briefly. And as the Spirit of the Lord will permit, we will turn again to this most wonderful revelation. Jesus said again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof, he goes, goeth, and he selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Let me say this to you today, those of you that are listening, who are saved, you're saintly, you're sanctified. There is no greater thing, there is no greater ownership, there is no greater place that a person can possess than a position 
in the kingdom of heaven. Not too long ago, a few years ago, there was a young man that gave up everything he owned in the physical and some of what he had received in the spirit realm because he gave up honor. He gave up the glory of being the grandson of a queen. Why did that young man do that? You know, a lot of people look at Harry and Mega, and why did he do that? He found love. Love is power. Jesus said something for God so loved. Love is a magnet. Love. But there is no greater. Now, all that Harry has experienced with being with Mega, that's wonderful. But she doesn't match Jesus. Mm -mm. Jesus so loved that he volunteered to come. Lo, the scripture says, I come as Christ. In the Father, as Christ in eternity, as Christ as a part of the creation when God said, let us make man. Jesus Christ spoke, lo, I come. As it is written of me, I delight to do thy will, O God. And the will of God was to fill the gap. Someone had to make up the hedge. Someone had to fill the gap that was open between God and man because of Adam's sin. Someone had to do something. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said, Lo. He made an announcement. L-O was a word that was to make an announcement. It was a preview word. It was alerting that there was an announcement to be made. Lo. And the Christ began to speak. I come. As it is written of me, I delight to do thy will, O God. I'm going to just paraphrase and skip some stuff. But a part of the will of God is that the keys would be transferred and they would be partially shared with the creation of God, mankind. But in order for that to be fulfilled, there had to be mentoring. First of all, there had to be the initial magnetism. Jesus spoke two words, and he magnetized men. Two words, he said. Follow me. This is what Jesus said. And when he spoke those words to Peter, Simon, Peter and the others were magnetized. But I'm, I'm kind of centering on Peter because later on Jesus spoke to Peter. He said, I give you the authority and the power as chief apostle. Of course, Peter didn't recognize that right then, but he did later. How was Peter to function? He had to have authority. He had to be transitioned. He had to be 
Amen. Something had to happen to Peter. And it did. Because on the day that Peter was fully filled and baptized with the Spirit of God, the authority rose and it consumed the fear. And Peter was able to step out before thousands and get their attention. He got their attention. Thousands of people were mingling in the city. But as Peter opened his mouth as a great, uh, with a great mic in his soul, I'm going to say it like that, Peter opened his mouth and he began to cry and preach. This is that which was spoken of the prophet Joel. And Peter began to let him know what was going on. And from that day forth, he was recognized as the chief leader for that season. There was another leader that God plucked. And there was Paul. But Peter's voice was elevated on the day of Pentecost. <clears throat> Excuse me. The kingdom of heaven was introduced. The kingdom of heaven was introduced the more in the physical. Jesus had made announcements that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But a part of the kingdom of heaven was further introduced on the day of Pentecost. Where people were just like a magnet drawing other objects that were magnetized. Remember, they had been in prayer for a long time. <laughs> yep. From Resurrection Day until the day of Pentecost is 50 days. They had, been along, they had been in prayer for 50 days. They went up and they gathered. For 50 days they went prayer, prayer and praises. And by that time, power of God was already had was had overshadowed them. But then, when the power of God filled that room where they were, and the Bible said cloven tongues like fire appeared over them, and that fire filled them, and Jesus. Prophecy was fulfilled that they would be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hey. Hallelujah. So the kingdom of heaven, amen, is greatly in the earth, but it is growing. Amen. It's growing. It's a growing process. And there will be a time when the kingdom of heaven will fill the earth. Yes. Then after that, the time will come where the kingdom of heaven will actually, it will be one with the physical earth. And there will be physical people who will still be in the earth realm. And those people will have to live off of something that is physical. From the tree of life. The leaves of the tree before the healing of the nation. So that lets you know that the kingdom of heaven has two spheres. S-P-H-E-R-E-S. 
The kingdom of heaven has a physical sphere, and it has the spiritual, the spirit sphere, S-P-H-E-R-E. People of God, don't miss it. Don't miss it now, and don't miss it when the trumpet sounds. Let's be ready. Let's press our way in into his gates with thanksgiving. Let's enter into his courts with praise. Let's let heaven be our portion daily. Let the kingdom of God, amen, let us be merged with the kingdom of God daily by dwelling in the secret place. Hallelujah. Amen. God is for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? In other words, if God is for us, isn't no power can destroy us. If we are where we're supposed to be in the Lord, in God, in his, in his will, <laughs> his perfect will, his presence, he that dwelleth in the secret place. We have to abide in the secret place. We have to dwell there. And if something happens pushing on us to get us out, we got to make sure we got our foot <laughs> and our being. No, no, no. Let the devil know. Say, I ain't going away. I'm going to stay right here in the secret place because the enemy will press to pull us out. So let's be very watchful. Well, God is for us. Wonderful Christ. I'm going to say it again. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who is a match for God? Oh, Lord have mercy. I was sharing not too long ago how I saw the, uh, I would say, the leavings of what air and wind did. But the air and the wind had a force. And when that air and that wind got through, it was a stone building towed up. We know it as a tornado. My, my, my. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Let's be careful. Amen. Let's walk with God. Be careful, saints. So we love the Lord. I love you. I appreciate all of you that come, that you take time to listen to these podcasts. And I trust that you are growing and have grown. But the Lord is taking us into another place. Can you tell it? Can you tell it? Can you tell it? Amen. He wants us to have something that is a little, got more grit and got more meat in it. (laughs) We had a little series uh, last year called Meat for the Mastery. Amen. It's time to get away from the pablum, get away from that that diluted oatmeal and all that. You better get some meat in your mouth in order to be able to stand what's going on now, and it's going to get greater. So your 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 spirit, amen, is going to have to have grit. You're going to have to have strength. You're going to have to eat the meat of the word. Hallelujah. Now, those of you that have not yet fully surrendered to the Lord Jesus, that he would be your Lord. He would be your Lord. Let me invite you today, or whenever you listen to this podcast, fully surrender. You won't regret it. Let him be your Lord, your master. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. And the way he does that many times is that you have to get into a Holy Ghost filled church where there's a Holy Ghost filled pastor, male or female. Mm -hmm. You got to get in where the other people of God are that are going and growing. But the initial thing is to surrender to Jesus so that you can be born of his spirit. Born of his spirit. You already were born of a spirit. Now you want to be born of his spirit. Oh, yeah, you you got the spirit of your mother and father and all of that. But you want to be born of his spirit. And that way you are positioned, amen, to receive all that God has. 
And believe me, we're living in awesome times. Holy hallelujah. You know, there's a scripture that says, we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God wants to move you. I don't care if you're the president of a bank. God wants to move you from the earthly seat to a heavenly seat. <laughs> we are seated in Christ. We are seated in Christ in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, is now. Now we have entered into, amen, the kingdom of heaven. Now, we're in it now. Holy, bless him. Gracious God, precious redeemer, amen. So yield yourself, repent, and believe the gospel. If you are a backslider, if you're a person that left God for things, God will restore. He will give you things. Amen. But he wants you to completely surrender. Well, ask God to forgive you. Let me say this to you. There's not a person on the face of the earth who hasn't had to say, forgive me. All of us do occasionally. And in fact, it's a good thing to keep your record up to date. Just every day, say, Lord, forgive me. Wash me. Help me. Go to the laundromat. Well, we take showers or do something. We got to put some water on. <laughs> Amen. We got to get under the water, get in the water, let the water get us, touch us. Amen. To be clean every day in the physical. So we want the water of the word to wash us daily. The water of his presence. Hallelujah. Thank God. So let's pray. As I pray, I want you to repent. If you are not yet totally surrendered to the Lord, say, Lord, forgive me. And then ask the Lord to wash you in his blood. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the finished work of Calvary. We thank you that we can enter into your presence through the blood. We're grateful. Hallelujah. We're grateful for the finished work of Calvary. And we can call on your name, Lord Jesus. And we're grateful. Now, bless. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. As I go off today again, we're presenting ourselves to the Lord. Stay encouraged, saints. Enter into his presence daily. Let the Holy Ghost give you some bread every day. Well, I love you. If you need to be healed, the word of God is a Healer. Listen to the word and be healed in Jesus' name. Bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Here I am, Lord, to be your witness. 